This exhibition is about what I'd like to term the weight of promises, um, which and by that I mean the kind of the emotional, mental, and psychological burden that promises of any kind can um, inscribe in, in your life. I have done this exhibition here at Future Contemporary Art Centre in Prague as a kind of a culmination of a two-month production residency also associated with Carlin Studios. Um, and uh, the exhibition is called Deaths, uh, the Erotic Review Sinai. Um, this exhibition was formed out of my continued working um, in tandem between object production and also uh, in theatrical uh, productions as well. So as what you see behind me as part of the exhibition um, here at Futura uh, is also going to be joined with a th new three-act play. Um, which will premiere at Studio Cardinu. Miss Lana is still so struck with grief. Well, she imagines her twin is still here with her. A grief-stricken slip of the tongue, sir. Oh, but you know, Jean, a simpleton. This um, began also uh, through an interaction with two um, one-act plays, one by August Strindberg called Pariah, uh, which was um, written when he was trying to develop his intimate theatre and also when he was very much uh, in correspondence with Nietzsche. And Pariah is a kind of 30-minute play about an archaeologist and, a, and an etymologist uh, stuck in a country house together discussing who is the worst criminal. Uh, and through the one act play, it's revealed that both of them are criminals and both of them end up owing each other quite a lot. And another play, which is um, another one act play, which is called Interior uh, by the Belgian playwright Maurice Metterling uh, from 1880. Um, and Interior features uh, as part of five plays that Metterling wrote uh, called his me uh, uh, marionette plays. Um, uh, there's two puppets in the exhibition here. Um, and this particular play um, features an old man and a what who's called and someone called the stranger who have to go to a house and tell the people inside the house that the um, the daughter of the family is dead, that she's drowned herself in the river. And so I began with these two texts and I also, um, so and I started using these as sort of narrative prompts for my own text, um, which is the play that will premiere on Thursday. Uh, and this play is about a governess and her young charge who um, return from Egypt to a home and have to tell the family that um, that live inside the home, that the girl's twin is dead. But throughout the course of the play, it's revealed that actually they have murdered her and they are having an affair. And as I began writing this play and kind of interrogating the ideas of archaeology, the ideas of criminality, um, I became more and more interested in sort of an idea of Egypt as a way of exploring a place, a time, um, and a sort of uh, a kind of historical trajectory that might open up a space in which the rules of promises, debts, owing, um, the rules of those things may be rewritten. And so that in Egypt, there may be a different way of paying one's dues and paying one's debts, rather than in Greece, which is the, which is the place 
uh, that here and that the, via what kind of classical tradition that our rules of law via Rome are built upon our cultural rules of philosophy of philology all of those things are built on I often work in the idiom of the decorative arts I make a lot of furniture I make a lot of ceramics uh, textiles um, and actually being here in Prague has been really fantastic because there is such a great um, a uh, craft tradition that still lives on here. Um, parts of the um, play, uh, a lot of all the different elements in the exhibition were produced in Prague or outside of Prague um, with kind of local factories. So we worked with um, a, a lace uh, manufactory in Zamberg. Uh, we worked with Ton uh, to produce uh, the different uh, bent wooden shapes. We produced, we worked with an absolutely phenomenal bookbinder in Zamberg, uh, one Mr. Fogel. Uh, he's about 85 and uh, is, is probably the most talented bookbinder book I've ever met. Um, so we used all these different sort of uh, practical and sort of craft traditions here in the Czech Republic. And, and through this, I also became in, um, interested in the, I, in the Egyptian revival. Uh, which is a kind of um, a sort of counter revival than the classical revival or the Greek revival that often keeps coming back into the decorative arts or architecture or things like that. So if you'll see this wall pattern behind me is an uh, interpolation of uh, a dining room that a, ma a furniture maker called Thomas Hope uh, designed in London in 1787 and it was known as the Egyptian drawing room. Here, the font of the Leporello here is an original uh, Egyptian revival font from 1886. Um, and then if you go through the different, different parts of the exhibition, sort of um, archaic and ancient Egyptian uh, kind of decorative motifs keep reappearing. Here, the drawings behind me refer to a series of 14 etchings that the British artist David Hockney produced in 1966, illustrating the poems of C.P. Kavafe, an, a Greek Alexandrian Egyptian poet uh, who began in the 1880s and then um, sort of gradually and most interestingly for Hockney, as he's one of the first writers to, who um, very strategically and very pointedly over time publicly outed himself as homosexual in his writing way before that this was accepted. And if you go through his poetry, he's writing in 1910, he's writing in 1918 um, in radically uh, queer terms about, um, you know, a very specific kind of milieu of kind of brothels, young men, um, and uh, kind of exchanges of love um, between men in Alexandria um, and that but interestingly enough often in Kavafi's work these uh, these loves these things that are given back and forth they are often pictured in the moment of financial dissolution there's a there's a rubber painting on the floor in the room next door that features a series of gloves and handkerchiefs. Uh, this refers to a very, very moving poem by Kavafe um, called, uh, and he asked about the quality. In the poem, which talks about a man who has been fired from his job and because every day at lunch, he goes to see the handkerchief shop, not to buy a handkerchief, but because during lunch at the handkerchief, the boss is asleep and him and the man who works at the handkerchief shop may touch each other's hands um, without being seen with the excuse of the handkerchiefs, with the excuse of an economic exchange between them. Um, and I think it's very, I think Kavafe is often talked about as like a, uh, a kind of prose writer in poetic form. He's often talked about as a kind of didactic writer. But I think this kind of financial aspect and the kind of like emotional weight 
of the financial that Cavafe seems to be able to infuse the most minute of daily quotidian transactions is actually really essential coming from Egypt now into the present in the ways in which systems of exchange in the present damage and violently affect all of us in the ways in which we interact, in the ways in which we give, in the ways in which we take. So I began to imagine the space here as a kind of ruin, uh, a kind of ruin space of a kind of bourgeois domestic environment in which a homosexual protagonist has had to flee because of his emotional, financial, and uh, psychological debts to the world around him. So if we're quiet for a second, you'll hear in the background the sound of a ringing telephone. And throughout the exhibition, you'll see three telephones made out of ceramics here in Prague. And the ringtones are recorded on Alwaz Haba's quarter tone piano in the Museum of Music here in Prague. So these telephones, although they come out of my long standing interest in Cocteau's text, La Voix Humaine, which features a woman speaking on a telephone on stage for over an hour to her lover who has just left her. They also refer to this kind of fantasy of a protagonist which has had to flee his environs because the bank is calling, because the bill collectors are calling, and this constant threat that has begun to infect his entire environment has caused him to leave all his treasures behind to leave this Egyptian palace that he is able to have built behind. And then you'll see also in the photographic works that dot again the exhibition, the photograms, they are built out of envelopes and piles and piles of envelopes stacking up at the door. And again, here we have a kind of, an environment, a kind of, um, a ruin of what once was love that has been ruined by money. Um, also, with the photograms, another thing as well, also what I've also tried to do here is I've also tried in coming to Prague to kind of look at the sort of aesthetic modes of the Czech avant-garde um, and sort of give them emotional weight. So again, if you think you have the sounds of Awaz Haba's quarter tone piano, um, there's only th three in the world. Another one is in Cairo. Um, uh, that this kind of very abstract, harsh, and sort of intellectual atonal music is brought to the fore in the present uh, as an emotional tool. Again, photograms, if you think of Yaroslav Rosler, who's a very, very famous Czech... I mean, I'm speaking to the... Uh, uh, what's the word? I'm speaking to, you know, people who know this here. But, um, and then to take those kind of formal abstractions and to kind of infuse them with a kind of emotional weight. And this is also, it's also a historical question of who owes what to who. And then you'll see in the, um, uh, in the, the large books downstairs, they feature um, a kind of Art Deco um, Egyptian revival motifs uh, taken from a very, very famous furniture factory in Chicago, uh, which infamously burnt down they feature um, the entirety of Madonna's Vogue video, the B-roll of Madonna's Vogue video. And, you know, and if it, Vogue is in uh, the, the Madonna uh, the Vogue video and Madonna's interaction with sort of a uh, voguing culture, which is a predominantly gay male African-American tradition, um, was often criticized as a kind of virulent parody or a kind of uh, um, a revolting sort of, uh, what sort of, I want to call vampirism of a culture and bringing it forward and sort of making a lot of money off of it. And so those images enter in the exhibition both as a kind of 
um, image of a, of a kind of queen at the bottom of the tomb that people have to descend to find, but also an image of a person who has very, very much um, been at the center of um, a kind of the questions of who, <laughs> who owns the keys to what. You know, I have, I've been writing a play about all yeah, of this yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And you know, the writing of the play informs what comes into the exhibition. Mm -hmm. And the exhibition goes again towards the writing of the play. I um, mean, some of the, you know, and well, well, I'm very, very happy, you know, I have four incredibly talented actors here um, from all over Europe and also America, Joseph Muhammad, Ruth Connick, Valerie McCann, and Catherine Lutke, and they've done a really extraordinary job um, over the last two months uh, working on the production that will be seen on Thursday.